insurance is defined as a contract which is popularly known as policy we don't generally use the word contract but the word which is quite familiar to us and popularly used in this industry is a policy so therefore insurance is a policy in which an individual or organization receives financial protection and compensation from the insurer or the insurance company for the loss suffered due to uncertain event in return for payment of a specified premium so in insurance there are two parties involved here one party undertakes the risk and the other party wants to seek protection from the risk risk against an uncertain event this uncertain event causes financial loss because of which the buyer the insurer sorry the insured the person who wants to buy insurance wants protection against this event and the seller or the insurer gives this protection against a fixed amount called premium now the event is obviously uncertain event may occur or it may not be occur. there is no guarantee that event will always occur but if it event if the event occurs then yes the party who has taken the insurance will suffer financial loss for which the insurance company will compensate the party who has purchased the insurance might suffer other forms of losses also but insurance companies do not cover loss which is not in monetary form that's one of the important principles of insurance also that insurance companies cover only monetary loss not non monetary loss and in today's class we will focus on varieties of insurance policies that are available in the market now when we uh, look at and reflect upon our day to day life as you are all aware that any unexpected event in life might have a serious uh, effect on your family's well being and in such cases many types of life health general insurance policies are available in india which provides full financial protection for both yourself and your loved ones at the same time you can also protect your assets property by buying insurance policies but however before you can buy an insurance policy it is very important that you understand what are the varieties of insurance policies that are available and then select the one which actually meets your need the best so usually what happens when it comes to purchasing in insurance policy there are various factors that you have to keep in mind right so how on what basis you want to buy an insurance policy how do you select the right insurance policy because uh, most of the time you have the need to buy an insurance policy and you have the financial capacity also so you have sufficient income to pay for the premium but as far as the selection of the appropriate insurance policy is concerned we tend to get influenced by the sales personnel so the kind of uh, explanation given by the sales personnel we get influenced by their suggestions and their proposal and in this process we really don't understand what exactly actually we want and insurance is also one of those sectors where there is quite a a huge cases of mis selling and given the fact that in india most of the people are also not literate right and a lot of people are uneducated so mis selling is rampant so therefore you need to be very cautious and not just go by what the uh, insurer is asking you to buy or the sales personnel or the agent is asking you or influencing you to buy but rather first try understand your requirements so you need to ask certain questions before you could buy an insurance policy right so what are those questions that you need to reflect upon before you could buy and choose appropriate insurance policy 
the first question which you need to do a proper study is on the family structure so you need to see how many family members you have how many of them are dependent on you. so this is a very important uh, evaluation criteria you are staying in a family where there is not not much financial dependence on you in that case uh, there is no point in buying the policy itself because obviously in case of uncertain event if everybody are already financially dependent and well to do then probably they might uh, not be very bothered about the financial loss the family might not suffer any kind of financial loss in case of the death of the person who has taken insurance and that's one of the reason also why insurance policy also and the insurance companies are also very clear that if you want to buy an insurance policy as we have discussed in the last session also you need to prove that there is an insurable interest insurable interest exists only if there is a financial loss otherwise it does not exist so in certain situations you cannot buy an insurance policy because there is no financial uh, loss suffered so in the absence of financial loss insurance policy cannot be issued right so therefore uh, there are various factors that needs to be kept in mind if an individual is the whole and sole bread winner of the family if all the family members are dependent on him and if there are too many members who are dependent on him then yes insurance becomes an important prerequisite because in the absence of this person the family will definitely suffer emotional loss but let's keep the emotional loss aside the family will suffer a major financial loss if the bread winner of the family itself is no longer alive so therefore it becomes very important that any individual on whom the family is financially dependent to personally take the initiative and to protect himself and to buy an insurance policy so this is the first step that you have to decide and to do a quick analysis whether insurance is really required for you or not once a person decides yes insurance is required the family members are totally dependent on him then comes the choice the selection which insurance to buy now it also depends on a lot of other factors now you might want to buy an insurance worth 10 crore for your family but does your income permits you to pay such a huge amount of premium because if an individual's salary is somewhere around 25 to 30000 buying a protection which goes in 5 crores and 6 crores would become quite challenging because this person might not be able to pay huge amount of premiums so one of the important uh, decision that influences which policy to buy is the income earning capacity or in other words we can say budget so if your budget permits you to buy a higher value of policy you can but in case if you have budget constraint you have to manage uh, your expenses within the limited amount of salary what you are earning and you also want to have an insurance policy for you then obviously you can decide on a policy which uh, gives you which uh, in which there is very uh, less amount of premium but reasonable amount of protection because at times you should also understand that uh, low amount of uh, policy is as good as not having it imagine if a person buys an insurance policy worth 5 lakh rupees what's the use i mean does it even make does 5 lakhs have any value in the society what what the dependents will do with those 5 lakhs right it does not make sense because when you look at some of the uh, situation some of the issues what we are facing in the society at the moment one of the major challenge for any individual in the society is to cope up with the mounting healthcare expenses imagine a person buys an insurance policy at the age of 30 and he has bought an insurance policy worth 50 lakhs okay and this insurance policy is valid for another 30 years okay now the issue is even though he is protected for 30 years term uh looking at the kind of lifestyle what we have obviously an average individual will get some of the common lifestyle diseases diseases like diabetes 
hypertension. These are quite common these days. But in case if this person continues to be very complacent and does not maintain his health, knowing the fact that he already has certain lifestyle diseases, then obviously he will end up landing in hospital. There will be a prolonged hospitalization in the old age. Right. And, you know, what do you what is the repercussion of prolonged hospitalization these days? Uh, the average cost of per day ICU bed is somewhere around 15,000 rupees. So if a person stays in ICU for 10 days, only ICU bed charges 150,000 rupees. On top of that, operation charges, these charges, that charges, hospital only will make a bill of 15 lakh rupees. And if this person has made a policy of 50 lakhs, in that 50 lakhs, 15 lakhs goes in payment of hospital bills only. I mean, this, these bills should be paid by the dependents, but ultimately when dependents get that uh, insurance compensation after death, they have already spent a lot of money on. They have spent a lot of money on prolonged hospitalization. After not just prolonged hospitalization, by looking at the kind of uh, uh, culture what we follow in India, because we follow a culture wherein we believe that there is a life even after death also. So that's the kind of belief which most of the religions in India have. And most of the religions in India also believe that body is separate and soul is separate, right? So therefore, for the uh, well-being of the soul of the person who has died, a uh, lot of uh, rituals are undertaken. Forget about post-cremation rituals. Death in itself is a kind of a ceremony in India because you have to invite your friends, relatives, make an arrangement, accommodate, right? Uh, food is offered, uh, cremation expenses, all that needs to be taken into account. And if there are too many dependents on this individual, what will all the individuals will do with that limited amount of compensation which a person might get after the debt? So therefore, uh, it is very important that when you're buying an insurance policy, you ensure that the amount of policy what you're planning to buy should be sufficient enough to take care of the expenses of the entire family. Otherwise, Taking small amounts of uh, summer short would definitely not help in any ways. Right? Imagine what will be the value of uh, 50 lakh rupees after 30 years. After 30 years, value of 50 lakh rupees will be like 5 lakh, 6 lakh rupees. Right? So you have to think from that perspective and buy a very reasonable policy amount. But again, at times you want to buy a higher value policy amount, but you might not have the capacity to pay premium. So that's the reason all these factors need to be accounted. Some of the other factors which you have to also consider at the time of buying the policy is what are your commitments? I mean, in case if there are children whose education needs to be completed, their marriage needs to be arranged in the future. In case if you have already taken loans, those loans should be paid back in the future. So consider these factors also. Imagine an individual has uh, four children, right? So who will take care of those four children upon his death? Who will take care of their educational expenses, their wedding expenses? And this individual has also a home loan. So in case if he dies, who will pay that home loan? So therefore, all these factors should also be considered. So if you have too many dependents and if they have too many things to accomplish like education, marriage, if you have too many debts, all those factors need to be accommodated before you could select an insurance policy. So therefore, consider all these factors. These factors are very important in selecting an insurance policy. And as I did mention, that insurance is not just for uh, human beings. It's not just for life. Insurance also exists for non-life things. And non-life insurance is also called as general insurance. 
So we have only two forms of insurance. The first one is called life insurance. The second one is called non-life insurance. But we do not use the word non-life insurance. We rather use the word general insurance. So in general insurance, you have your property insurance, uh, your health insurance, right? All these are some of the examples of various forms of uh, non-life insurance but anyways we'll come to non-life uh, insurance a little later first let's focus on uh, life insurance so in life insurance if you want to buy life insurance policy as you can see on the slide you have a wide range of choice available at your disposal so you need to select uh, which category you want and this classification is broadly categorized into three main segments. So first you have something called as pure protection. The second category is called protection plus some sort of a saving plan, a combination of both. And third one is called pension plans. So these are the three broader category of insurance policies that are available in India. Even though various names are given, if you go to LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India, which is the largest uh, government-owned insurance company in India, you will find that they have hundreds of policies with different names. So even though they have titled their products with so many names and varieties, they all still form under any three of these categories. Any insurance in the available in the market, even though they call that by different names, right? But they fall under these three categories. Sometimes you will come across on the TV. Uh, some plans will say, okay, buy an education plan for your children's future, buy an buy a insurance plan for your daughter's marriage, right? Buy an insurance plan for your retirement. So all that is basically purely from the perspective of market. Because when you make the product relatable to a customer's life and needs, the decision making becomes a little easier. But if you complicate the terms, then customer might not understand. So that's the reason from the marketing perspective, they sell under different names. But any or all the policies, as I mentioned, falls under these three categories. Now let's start with uh, term insurance. A pure protection plan is a simple risk cover insurance product in which the sum assured becomes payable if the risk event occurs within the policy term. So that's the basic essence. In pure protection insurance, the risk is covered and the risk coverage is based on a fixed term. And that's the reason this is also known as term insurance policy. So what it means is when you buy this term insurance policy, you're covered against the risk. Now, what is the risk here? Death. On, and only if the risk arises, the dependents will get compensated, which means a person buys a, terms insur a term insurance. First of all, it is covered only for a specific term, not for life term. Let's say an, a person who is 25 years old, he buys a 20 years term insurance. So 20 that means he's covered only up to the age of 45. So if something happens to him up to the age of 45, the insurance company will pay the compensation to its dependents, to the dependents of the policy holder. But in case if something goes wrong, which means if the death occurs after the policy term, then nothing can be done. The protection is given only for a specific term. So that's the reason it is called term insurance. So term insurance is the most basic type of life insurance in the market. A term insurance is a pure protection plan that provides extensive coverage. And one of the important highlights of term insurance is its affordability. It is available at a very low price. Now, sometimes you will see this Akshay Kumar ad on television. He's the brand ambassador for policybazaar.com. And you see claims like this at just one rupee per day or at just 10 rupees per day by, by a term cover, which is for one crore rupees. So you'd be wondering, how can I just spend 10 rupees a day 
and get an insurance of 1 crore then rupees is a day if you calculate how much will it come uh, it will come to up to uh, 300 rupees uh, a month right so 300 rupees into one year so 12 into 300 3600 rupees right so in 3600 rupees premium what you are paying per annum can you get an insurance policy which is worth 1 crore rupees the answer is yes it all depends at what age you buy insurance the earlier you buy the cheaper the premium the higher the protection you can get but as you delay the premiums becomes expense so if you want a higher sum assured amount then obviously you have to shell out on a higher premium but when you do a comparison between all these plans all the three categories pure protection protection plus saving pension plans if you do a comparison the, the cheapest and the most reasonable insurance is term covered so all of you who have a budget constraint who have a limited salary and you don't want to spend too much amount on insurance policy then obviously you can buy a pure protection plan because here the premiums are very cheap but the only limitation is that in case if you survive the policy term you will not get anything back all that premiums what you have paid you will not be able to recover them or all the premiums what you have paid you will not get them back in case if you survive the term of coverage so that's the only limitation and there is also an opinion which most of the experts and financial planners always give and even i also give this suggestion that you should not when you're buying insurance go for a pure insurance never mix savings and insurance together so even though you have products like end of end whole life money back and all that but these are convenient products but they actually don't serve the purpose neither they give you good protection nor they good give nor they give you good amount of return so it's useless right so but this these plans are available in the market there are buyers there are buyers for these plans also but the thumb rule of financial planning says that you should always have a pure protection plan and you should not mix savings and insurance you should not mix investment and insurance so from that principle perspective also this is the best insurance which is available in the market so in term insurance what happens is it pays your uh, nominee or the dependents the sum assured if the insured dies during the policy period as i mentioned the insurance proceed assist the dependents and the family members in meeting their everyday expenses paying off loans uh, probably it will support them in all their endeavors that's how it works it is important to know that pure term plans do not provide maturity advantage so that's the point which i was highlighting that it will not return your money back in case if you survive the policy term so in pure term for term insurance itself there are five varieties i have not mentioned it in the slide but there are five varieties variety number 1 is called increasing term cover so let's say you are 25 year old okay you have taken a 30 year policy term which means you are covered up to the age of 55 years 30 year is your term policy okay now one of the challenge here is that the premium even though the premium will be cheap so let's say the policy what i have mentioned you will end up paying somewhere around 7000 rupees only per year for this 50 lakh rupees worth of insurance for 30 years of protection you will pay just 7000 per annum the premium is very cheap no doubt about it but one of the major limitation here is that as had i i mean i had highlighted this issue earlier also that even though you have taken a 50 year policy sorry 50 lakh rupees policy but what will be the worth of this 50 lakhs after 30 years that's the problem that after 30 years this 50 lakh will be as good as 5 lakh rupees 
so that's the limitation right so a solution to this problem is to go for increasing term cover so what happens in increasing term cover the life insurance coverage under this plan increases at a predetermined pace over the period of time so when you buy this increasing term cover after every year on year basis or at a certain points the policy amount will also increase it all depends on the premium also so in my example i said you 7000 rupees per annum 50 lakh of his coverage so what will happen after 5 lakhs 50 lakh coverage will become 80 lakh coverage but the premium amount will also increase but in a way it's good because even though you are paying higher premium your protection amount is also increased and in the future you need more and more money because 50 lakhs sounds reasonable okay at present it is okay at present but after 30 years 50 lakh rupees will not be okay right so therefore you see every certain period here the amount of insurance coverage is increasing along with premium so this seems to be a very good option right In, instead of paying high premiums throughout the policy term why don't you pay incremental premiums and with this incremental in the premium the life uh, some assured amount of the life insurance policy also increases it seems to be a very beautiful product well designed product so this is one of the best uh, advise that is to when you are buying term insurance go for an increasing term cover provided your budget should permit it the second one is quite opposite it is called decreasing term cover now increasing term cover makes sense because you, when you are growing older the risk is high the value of money in the future will come down on account of high inflation it makes sense but why would you buy decreasing term cover does it make sense to buy decreasing term cover imagine every year the insurance sum assured is coming down absolutely does not make sense so the sum assured decreases as the policy term grows and typically a declining term cover is taken under some circumstances Now, what are those circumstances in the circumstances of loans right i told you that your life insurance it works on the principle of insurable interest which means in case if you are taking loan right the person who is giving you loan can take an insurance policy on your name in case if he takes let's say mr x has taken 10 lakh rupees from mr y for 10 years right every year he is clearing 1 1 lakh rupees so mr y who is the lender to be safer side to be on the safer side he goes to an insurance company and says that i am giving loan to mr x 10 lakh rupees i want to buy an insurance policy for him. so insurance company will give insurance company will not object because insurable interest exist insurable exist insurable interest exist when there is a financial loss so in case if the borrower does not pay the money lender will incur financial loss so therefore lender has the right to buy an insurance because he can prove insurable interest exist here but insurance company will not give insurance amount which is beyond the financial loss so if mr y says even though i have given only 10 lakh rupees loan to mr x but give me a 1 crore policy insurance company will not give because you can't do profit in insurance business right so therefore insurance company will say okay we'll give you 10 lakh rupees take the policy term 10 lakh rupees uh, you pay and you i mean 10 lakh rupees you will get in case of any uncertain event but the policy will cover only for 10 years and the sum assured will also be only for 10 lakhs because you have given only loan of 10 lakhs only but the problem here is uh, first year this guy will pay off 1 lakh rupees so the loan value will only be 9 lakhs but the lender is paying insurance premium amount which he has taken for a 10 lakh rupees policy then what's the use why should he pay higher premium for 10 lakhs because every year the loan amount is increasing but he is continuing to pay the premium amount which is for 10 lakhs so therefore it does not make sense so in this situation it makes sense that you go for a decreasing term cover so as the loan amount decreases the term cover amount also decrease 
the premium payable will also drastically come down. In this way, it will help the lender to save money also. So this decreasing term cover is suitable only in case of financing transactions, loan business. Otherwise, for individual, this is an absolutely disastrous policy. Then the most commonly bought insurance policy is called level term cover, in which the premium amount will also remain same throughout the term of the insurance policy. And point number two, the sum assured amount will also remain the same. It will not change at all. So this is something which is widely available in the market. It is called level term life insurance. Or even if you say term insurance, it means this one. Level term insurance in which premium payable will not change. Sum assured will also not change. Then you have another interesting policy called convertible term assurance policy in which a policy holder can convert his term insurance policy into whole life insurance policy, convertible. But it has its own clauses and regulations which are applicable. Then you have renewable term life insurance. So with renewable term life insurance, the insurance provider will automatically renew the coverage after policy terms expires typically 5 to 20 years. So let's say I've taken insurance, you're at the age of 25. You have taken insurance policy for 20 years. But after 20 years, you don't even remember things. So automatically the insurance uh, policy will get renewed for another specific duration. Because it's not possible that you have taken insurance at the age of uh, 20 and you have already taken for a 40 year insurance policy, which means the protection is up to 60 years. But after 60 years, the insurance company will not renew it for another 20 or 30 years. It's not possible. So after 60 years, the maximum another five years, they will renew. They will renew the policy because the average lifespan in India itself is 63 to 62 years. So there's no point in renewing the insurance policy at the age, which is the most riskier, that is after 60. Right. So let's quickly do an evaluation. What are the advantages and disadvantages of term insurance? One of, the, one of the biggest advantage which I have highlighted throughout the discussion is the premium is very low, but you get a high value of sum assured. Second important benefit is that it is very easy and simple to buy. You can go to a website of any insurance company and easily buy it. All you have to do is spend some five to 10 minutes. You have to fill up a proposal form in which you would be asked a couple of questions based on which your profile assessment will be done and then the premium amount will be quoted by the software computer itself. There is no uh, human beings involved like earlier. Earlier you have to fill up a proposal form, agent will take the form, another department called the underwriting department will study your form and then they will inform the agent that this is the quote. So all that is gone now. In 5-10 minutes you can buy the policy. That's how simple it has become. Right, so policy buying is hassle free now, right? Uh, so you can easily buy this, and there's no medical test, all this is gone. There was a time when medical tests were mandatory, but now only declaration has to be done. If you have any health problem, if you have any disease, you have to declare that I have this. That's it. Based on that, the premium will go up. So if you say that uh, I'm having diabetes, the insurance company will not say, No, I'll not give you insurance. Considering this diabetes, they will increase your premium. If you say that I'm a smoker, then premium amount will go up. If you say I'm a non-smoker, the premium amount will be less. That's, that's how it is. So it's very easy and convenient to buy. But in case if you give any false information, then you will have serious issues in the time of claiming. So that's also one of the important uh, principles of insurance. It is called utmost good faith. Something which we did discuss in the previous session, if you could recall. We did uh, discuss a point called uh, utmost good faith when we were discussing principles of insurance, right? So this principle of uh, second principle, principle of utmost good faith tells us that you should uh, reveal all the information and it's not just your responsibility. You should also give information, correct? And the insurance company should also give, explain you the product, correct? So from both the parties, this is expected. Third, you get income tax benefit. So you can claim deduction 
towards the premium amount paid under Section 80C of Income Tax Act. And in case of uncertain event, the dependents will get lump sum, sum assured amount. On that also, there is no tax. So under Section 10, subsection 10D, uh, any amount received from insurance companies uh, towards the compensation is also exempted from tax. And another benefit of term insurance policy is that there's a flexibility in terms of deciding the term, in terms of uh, renewing it, in terms of converting it at a later point in time, that flexibility is provided. Now, what are the drawbacks? What are the limitations of the term cover insurance policy? One of the major limitations is that there is no return on investment. You will not get any return. In case if you, if the uncertain event does not occur during the term, you will lose all your premium amount. It will not be repaid. Also, forget about return. In case of, uh, in case if the individual survives during the term, he will not even get back his premium paid amount. So he has to lose all that premium amount what he has paid. No financial assistance when you are alive because assistance is only after death. No wealth creation. No cash benefits. Right? Nothing. You can't expect any of these benefits. So no return on investment, no financial assistance. Your wealth will not increase. You will not get any cash benefit. All this you get deprived of. Right? But even though there are demerits, but the merits are solid enough, strong enough to overcome the demerits. So let's move on to the next segment called protection plus savings. So in protection comes savings insurance policies. The policy holder can utilize long-term savings in addition to having a pure uh, term-based insurance cover. Protection and savings Life insurance plans are a greater way to cover your protection needs as well as your long-term aspirations. So you can also fulfill your long-term goals like children's education, marriage, retirement, and many other things. And in these plans, the premiums is split into two parts. Premium, which goes towards life coverage, and premium that the company will give you back in the form of returns. So this is what happens in protection and savings plan. Now, coming to the variety of uh, plans available under protection from you know, protection plus savings. One of them is endowment plan. So endowment plan is a life insurance policy that serves two purposes. An endowment policy can be utilized to generate risk-free savings corpus and it also provides financial security to the family in the event of unforeseen calamity. So the protection plus savings, as I mentioned, the premium itself is split into two parts. One goes towards covering the uncertain event, that is the death. And upon death, the compensation is given to the dependents. The second one is another portion of the premium gets invested. And the investment is risk-free, which means the insurance company will not put your money in the stock market so that in case of any uncertainty, your premium will also be lost. But rather, the insurance company will put your insurance premium money in safe investment havens like government bonds, public provident funds. These are safe havens, right? Nothing will happen to your investment. So therefore, you will get risk-free return also in the future. But whether these returns are good enough or not, that's a matter of question. And whether the risk coverage amount is also high or low, that is also a problem. Because in most of the time in endowment plan, if you want to have higher risk coverage, you have to pay a very high premium. So I gave you an example that in case of term insurance, if you pay 7,000 per annum, you will get a maturity compensation amount worth 50 lakhs by just paying 7,000 per annum. But that's not the case in case of endowment plan. Endowment plan is quite expensive. So if you want uh, 50 years, so sorry, if you want 50 lakh coverage, then for 50 lakh coverage, you have to spend huge amount of premium also, right? So the premium amount will be very high if you want that 50 lakhs. 
So let's say uh, I was giving an example of 30 years term cover. So for a 30 years uh, term cover, if you want to get 30 years term cover and after 30 years, if you want your uh, 50 lakh rupees back, then you have to pay somewhere around 1,68,000 per annum. So look at the difference. In case of endowment plan, you have to pay a premium of somewhere around 1,68,000 per year to get coverage of worth 50 lakhs. But here in term insurance, you're just paying 7,000 rupees. That's it. And you're getting a 50 lakh rupees policy. 7,000 per annum, 1,68,000 per annum. So higher the coverage you want, your premiums will shoot up like that. The calculation is simple. The calculation is quite simple. So I, I just said 50 lakh rupees for 30 years, right? So 50 lakh rupees divided by 30, which means you will be paying somewhere around 1,67,000 or 1,66,000 roughly per annum. But when you're getting your money back, you will not just get 50 lakhs. You will get 50 lakhs. All that what you have paid, 1,66,000 per annum, you will get it back, 50 lakhs. Plus, you will also get bonus. Bonus is nothing but a profit what you have got. Would that be a great amount? The answer is that might also not be a great amount. So probably at the time of receiving it back, uh, instead of 50, you might get 70 lakhs. But imagine after 70 lakhs, what will be the value of that 70 lakhs after 30 years? So after 30 years, that value of 70 lakhs will be as good as the value of some 25 lakh or 30 lakhs. So technically, you have not made any profit. You have lost all your money. So therefore, that's the reason experts, advisors, they always tell people, don't buy protection plus savings. If you're paying a premium of 1,66,000 rupees, take that 6,000 rupees, buy a pure term cover, invest that 1 lakh in the stock market. If you invest 1 lakh every year in the stock market, after 30 years, you will become a millionaire. Right? But in, in, in endowment policy, definitely you will not become rich. In fact, you will lose your money considering the inflation factor. So that's how uh, endowment plan works. The simplicity of an endowment plan is that it uh, makes it a profitable saving strategy for everyone. Right, but are this efficient profits? The answer is no, the profits are not efficient, but yes, you will earn. In case if death occurs, the life insurance endowment policy pays the dependents, the family member, the entire summer show, which means the family members, whatever the summer show is. In our example, I gave you 50 lakh as summer show, so the dependent will get that 50 lakh summer show easily. So that's how it works. Then you also have uh, something called as whole life policy. The whole life policy, as the name implies, it lasts for the entire duration of the insured life as long as the premium are paid. In case that the insured passes away, the nominee receives specified sum. So the policyholder can cancel or borrow against the coverage of, at any moment, this policy has a maturity period of 100 years. The policy will become matured endowment if the insured survives past maturity age. So there are several kinds of whole life insurance policies also. Right? So what happens, as the name suggests, you're covered for the entire life. But the problem is you need to keep paying premium for your entire life. At one point in time, you will not be having any source of income for yourself. You'll be dependent on somebody else. In that case, how will you pay the premium? So this policy covers you for the entire life. Entire life means 100 years. Right? But in case of a person survives 100 years also, then after 100 years, no longer insurance protection will be given. Money will be given back in the form of endowment. So again, this policy has a lot of limitations. The premiums are quite high. And the kind of bonus or return what you get is very low. 
So this is not considered to be a very good investment and neither it's a good protection plan because the higher the policy amount, the premium will shoot up. So in that way, it's again a very uh, bad form of insurance generally recommended, generally not recommended by the financial plans. Then you also have money back policy. The good thing about money back policy is that you don't have to wait for the policy to get over to get your money back. At certain intervals also you can take the money back. So this is also kind of an endowment policy only. In endowment policy you will get some on the death of the individual. The other one is upon survival. So in both the situation you get the money back. But the uh, issue is what if somebody wants money in between? So let's say money after 10 years is a, a person has taken money back plan for 30 years, endowment plan for 30 years. He's at the age of 25. He has taken endowment policy for 30 years. So for 30 years, he will pay premium. After 30 years, he'll get his money back with bonus, with returns. But what if he wants money in between? That's in that case, it will not, it is not possible. You get money in between. But in money back policy plan, it is possible. So let's say a person who is 25 years old, he buys an insurance at the age of 25. And after 10 years, he gets 25% of the amount back, which you can use it for buying a house. He might not buy a house with that amount, but yes, it will help him in buying the house. Next 20 years, he'll also get some amount, which will help him in his children's higher education. After 30 years, he'll get the entire amount back. That amount he can use it for children's marriage. So in that way, money back plan can help you achieve your financial goals easily. Right? So some people prefer money back plan instead of pure endowment plan, which promises to pay only after the term expires. Now, another interesting plan is called ULIP, Unit Linked Insurance Plan. Or sometimes it is also referred as Unit Linked Insurance Policy. So here what happens is it is a combination of mutual fund plus insurance, which means all that premium what you pay gets invested in the stock market. Now, depending on the performance of stock market, if the stock market does well, you get a good returns, no doubt about it. But in case if the stock market is done terribly bad, depending on the performance, you might get lesser money. Or you might not get any money if the performance of the stock market is very bad. But in case something happens to the person who has bought the insurance between this term, the family members will get the sum assured. Sum assured is irrespective of the performance of the stock market. But again, the limitation in this policy is that the premiums are very high. So higher the premium you want, I mean, higher the sum assured you want, higher the premium you have to pay. So that's the uh, disadvantage, I would say, in what you have in the unit linked uh, insurance plan. I happened to take one when I was a student like you. Uh, <clears throat> I was working at that time after my graduation. I did take a year break and then I started working. And uh, during that break, one of my friend approached me, who was my classmate in my BCom. And he was doing MBA at that time. And uh, he approached me. He said uh, his uh, college has given him internship. As a part of internship, he has to work in a company. And this company where he worked was a mutual fund company. And they gave him a target that only if you sell so many policies, you will get your internship completion certificate. So he requested me to buy. And at that time, anyways, I was working. So I thought, let me buy it. So I bought a five-year term policy, only just for five years. Not more than that. So I said, okay, five years I'll buy. So I, exp I asked him, what is the plan? He said, you have to invest 10,000 rupees uh, every year and 5,000, I mean, 10,000 year for every year and five years, which means I would, I would have probably paid how much? 10,000 into five years, I would have paid 50,000 rupees. But in case during an uncertain event, which is death, the dependents would get 10 times what I would have paid which means the dependents would get 5 lakh rupees. So 50,000 is what I'm paying in this plan for the period of five years. 
So in case of uncertain event, the dependence would get 10 times, which means 5 lakhs. But let's say the policy holder survives during this five years. What will happen? Whatever amount he has invested, 50,000 rupees in this case, every year that amount gets invested, 10,000 you pay a, a particular year, that amount gets invested in the stock market. So obviously, for the five years, the money would have got invested in the stock market. So after five years, depending on the uh, uh, depending on the uh, situation, uh, depending on the performance of the stock market, uh, it will depend, right? And inter interestingly, I'll just tell you what happened in my case. I'm just trying to uh, get the details of that policy from my email. Let me just quickly check how much I received. It's quite interesting because uh, 10,000 rupees per annum, the, I opted for a monthly EMI plan. So monthly, hardly I used to pay somewhere around 700 rupees or 800 rupees. So I one point in time forgot that I had invested this because the amount was so low. Monthly some 700 rupees, 800 rupees used to get deducted from my bank account. At one point in time I had forgotten. And after the policy term over got, got over, I didn't even make a claim. So years passed and when my wedding was arranged at that time a postman comes to my house and delivers a letter to my mother and my mother gave me this letter i was uh, surprised what kind of a letter is this when i opened it it had uh, a check uh, a check of somewhere around 1 lakh uh, 75000 rupees imagine i had invested 50 what I got back was 1,75,000. And imagine at the time of wedding when you get 1,75,000 rupees, it becomes such a handy amount because, you know, the kind of expenses what we have to bear in Indian weddings. Uh, wedding in itself is an expensive financial affair, right? So therefore, it really helped me. All of a sudden, I didn't even remember it, but it just came handy. So therefore, you live. Even though financial advisors will not advise you to mix investment and insurance, they'll rather sell you go for a term insurance plan and then invest the other money in the stock market. Right. But yes, for those people who find it extremely difficult to do both, this is a decent option, I would say. It, it works. Right. But it does not give you a good coverage in terms of life insurance. So if you want a higher coverage, then you have to shell out a lot of money, which is not possible. So the best plans of all these plans to conclude is your term insurance plan. That's the best plan and very affordable plan to buy. Now, let's move on to the pension plans. Uh, and it is needless to say the relevance and importance of Retirement corpus, the kind of uh, era in which we are living, you know, more and more people are living in uh, nuclear families, not like earlier when we used to have joint families and there is always somebody who will take care of the parents. Things have drastically changed over a period of time. When we look at the mentality of Indian society, when we examine the way the society has evolved over a period of time, and when we go back in our history and we look at people had a mindset in olden days. The mindset was to have more and more children. After marriage, have more and more children. And having and not just having more children, have preferably more male children. Because the mentality was male was considered to be a kind of a income plus protection plan. Whereas female, right, there was some sort of a inhibition that yes, at the time of wedding, you have to give dowry. So there's always a financial burden and the child also does not stay in family and does not take care of the parent in their old age. So that was the kind of mentality. That's the reason old days people used to prefer more and more male, male child. And people used to have dozen children, right? Uh, uh, probably you can ask in your families and you'd be surprised to know that your grandparents and great grandparents would definitely would have had seven to eight children 
And the logic was simple. If I have 10 children, in, in those 10 children, let's say seven are female, uh, so let's say three are female, seven are male. In those seven males, at least two, three children will be lo loyal and take care of me during my old age when I will have issues, issues of non-income, issue of health, they will take care. But that logic is slowly getting faded away with the time because slowly the mentality of the society, the people have changed and now you don't need to have children for your financial protection and old age. You can have an insurance plan. You can have a pension plan. So pension plan will take care. Right? So this is one perspective. The other perspective is that uh, we are living in an era of medical progress where mortality rates have decreased and lifespans have increased significantly. It is critical that an individual saves enough to meet his financial demands as his earning capacity declines with the progress of age. In Indian context, an average, uh, in Indian context, as the Indian economy grows, the nuclear family structure is rapidly spreading, leaving elderly parents to manage for themselves. Now that's the major issue that nobody wants to take care of their old parents. So in a situation like this, you should only, don't expect your children will take care of you. Probably they'll throw you in some old age form, right? So you need to be intelligent enough, now only to think of your retirement and subscribe for a pension or a retirement plan so that even after you retire, you're not financially dependent on somebody else. That's the point which I wanted to make, right? So therefore, savings and pension plans are important strategies for mitigating the risk of not being able to satisfy financial needs in old life. So it's very important that you have a proper vision now itself for your retirement. So what are these pension policies? Now, pension policies, often known as retirement plans, they combine investment and insurance. A portion of the premium are used to create the policyholder's retirement corpus. After the policyholder retire, this retirement corpus, retirement corpus is nothing but a lump sum amount, right, is available to the person who has taken the policy. So after retirement, he can decide whether he wants that amount in lump sum or whether he wants monthly payout. So he can decide. So life insurance protects against financial risk of dying too young, leaving the family financially unsecured. Whereas pension plan protects against the financial risk of living too long. Right? So this point is something which you need to understand that life insurance protects us against the risk of dying early and pension plans protects against the risk of living too long. Both are an issue in Indian society. Elsewhere also, right? So therefore, pension plan is something which you should definitely uh, think of. Of course, there are plenty of pension plans which are available in the market. You have pension plans offered by the private sector, you have pension plan offered by the government, also known as national pension scheme, right? Uh, so you, you can decide, as I mentioned in pension plan, you have two portions. One portion of your premium is meant for the death compensation. And one, person, one portion of your premium is meant for your retirement corpus. You can decide where the uh, fund management company wants to invest the other portion of your premium. So if you're a risk taker, you can tell them, please invest my money in stock market. They will invest it. But if you say, no, no, I'm risk hours, I don't want to take this, they will invest in government bonds and other secured investments. So you can decide. So that's the kind of flexibility these pension plans provide. So I would advise, yes, pension plan is the need of the hour. And definitely it's worth considering this. But again, uh, you know, the kind of return what these pension plans provide, uh, if you want to 
the returns to be reasonable and surpass the inflation rate, then you should invest your insurance uh, or the pension plan premium in equity market. Only then you will get that huge lump sum amount when you retire, which you can enjoy the rest of your life. So that is something which is uh, worth considering. And for all those conservative people who think that, okay, private insurance companies are not safe, they might probably do you because even though it does not happen, but some people have that mentality, you can go for a government insurance uh, plan. So NPS is what is available in India. It is called the National Pension Scheme. And it's a popular choice if you wish to receive regular pension after your retirement. And it is regulated by government of India. So there is a dedicated regulator for this called uh, Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority, which is PFRDA. And you can contribute your uh, pension amount throughout your working life. So your funds gets invested in, as I mentioned, various avenues depend, depending on what you choose. Right. So definitely pension plans offer a lot of benefits. First, it offers you an opportunity to invest your money. It is ideal for long term savings. You can choose where you want to invest, whether in stock, equity, debt. And you can also choose how you want to receive the amount, whether you want to receive the amount in lump sum after you retire or whether you want like a monthly pension amount. So that is also possible. And this has the capability of absorbing inflation provided you invest in stock market. And in emergency, of course, the dependents get lump sum amount. There are a host of benefits. Definitely, this is worth uh, considering. So these are uh, some of the different types of uh, life insurance uh, plans that are available in the market. 